Moving and handling are important parts of the home carer role and are involved in everyday activities like cleaning, cooking, toileting and bathing. According to the Manual Handling Operations Regulations, manual handling is the moving, lowering, pushing, pulling, carrying or supporting of a load using your hands or your body. A load can either be animate, a person for example, or inanimate, like a box or table. What you may not know is that if you don't follow the principles of moving and handling, these tasks could present a significant risk of back or other musculoskeletal injuries to both you and the service user. At the very least, it may mean loss of income and back problems later in life. For your employer, colleagues and service users, it could mean loss of experienced staff, changes to work schedules, increased workload and loss of continuity of care. This video will help you understand how to reduce the risk of back and other injuries by describing your rights and responsibilities under health and safety law, showing how you use and misuse your back at work, introducing the efficient moving principles and good posture, and demonstrating how you can safely assist service users to move with and without special equipment. The Health and Safety at Work Act, Management of Health and Safety at Work Regulations and the Manual Handling Operations Regulations give rights and responsibilities to both you and your employer. As an employee, you have a right to safe systems of work, safe equipment to work with, safe use, handling and transport of objects, information, training and supervision at work and a safe working environment. Your responsibility is for the things you do and don't do, as these affect both your health and safety and that of the service user. You also have a duty to be familiar with and follow your employer's moving and handling policy and their systems of work. If there are failings in these systems or in the health and safety policy, you must report them. Meanwhile, your employer is obliged to carry out a moving and handling risk assessment of the risks you and each service user faces. The following areas will be covered in this assessment. Task Individual capability of worker Load and Environment and equipment Firstly, your employer must answer questions about the position you have to adopt when doing a handling task. For example, whether it involves carrying, stretching or stooping, and how far, often and long you have to hold the load. The next part of the assessment addresses risks to the carer. Typical questions would be, is special training required for this task? Or, is this task hazardous to a pregnant woman or someone with joint problems? Then, your employer must assess the types of load you handle, including the service user. Criteria for assessing inanimate loads include size, shape, fragility and bulk. If the handling task is moving or assisting a service user to move, factors such as the service user's age, ability to stand, pain, fatigue, cognitive and cooperative ability and communication should also be taken into account. Regarding environment and equipment, your employer must decide whether there is enough space for you to move safely and whether there are obstacles that might hinder movement. Other features to assess are the equipment you use in your job, lighting and the presence of steps and slopes. A risk assessment will identify any risks and enable your employer to draw up a care plan for each service user. These plans are kept in service users' homes and at your employer's office. They specify how you should handle and move the service user for each task involved in a typical visit and foreseeable emergency situations. You must comply with them, advising your manager of changes that may affect the safety of those tasks and of any accident you or a service user have involving moving and handling. This formal level of risk assessment forms a vital part of the care plan. But before you carry out any moving and handling task, you should always make an informal judgement as to the potential dangers involved and act accordingly. Now that you know your obligations under health and safety law, the next step is to understand the types of physical movement that can cause back injury and how they appear in the domiciliary setting.
A healthy spine is designed to be flexible. Its 33 bones, or vertebra, are separated by strong pads that act as shock absorbers and allow the spine to bend. Ligaments and muscles provide stability and power. Damage to its basic structures can cause pain. The most common causes of damage in the domiciliary setting are twisting and bending and working in a stooped posture. Aspects of care work mean that you will sometimes find yourself in a situation where bending or twisting seems necessary. In fact, these moves put a great deal of pressure on the spine, particularly the lower back or lumbar area, and can result in serious injury. Many of the back problems that home carers experience are caused by stooping or stretching frequently or for long periods. What happens is when you bend forwards, your centre of gravity moves away from the base of the spine. This increases the load on the spine. Even the weight of your body can be enough to cause injury in these cases. Poor posture when standing can also have negative effects on back health. It can stretch or distort the muscles attached to your vertebra, causing tears and other damage. We have probably all been guilty of bending, twisting and stooping in our work. Fortunately, these postural positions can be avoided, which is essential given that each can build to chronic conditions. Home carers typically have to do tasks that involve moving and handling. You might have to help a service user into and out of a chair, or take out bags of refuse. So it is important to learn the correct way to prepare for and perform moving and handling tasks safely. Before moving or handling something or someone, consider whether it's really necessary or whether you need help or equipment. In all cases, your uniform or clothes should be loose-fitting and your shoes low or flat-heeled so that you can move easily. If the task is necessary, plan it. If the load is inanimate, plan where you are going to put it and whether you need to change hold halfway through the move. In all cases, remove obstructions. Next, adopt a dynamic, stable base. Be prepared to move your feet during the move to maintain your stability. Soften your knees and hips. Maintain the natural curves in your spine and don't twist. Hold the load with your palms and whenever possible, hug it close at waist point and keep your elbows in. Make sure your head is up and chin in. Be careful not to stoop or squat because this will stretch and strain your back muscles. If you need to turn, don't twist your back or lean sideways. Instead, move your feet in the direction in which you want to go. Do not jerk or snatch the load as this can make it harder to keep control and increases the risk of injury. When you're ready to put the load down, bend your knees and back again, maintaining its natural curves. If you ever have doubts about a particular handling task, seek advice from your manager. Your spine is designed to be flexible and strong, but moving it awkwardly and moving and handling loads incorrectly can cause painful and sometimes lasting damage. Applying efficient moving principles and familiarizing yourself with your rights and responsibilities under health and safety law and with care plans will help to reduce risk of injury to you and the service user. When you have to carry out a basic handling task, think before moving. Don't pick up a load unless you have to. Don't pick up a load if you think it might be too difficult for you. Plan the handling task. Adopt a stable posture. Get a good hold and hold the load close. Use your feet to turn and keep your head up and looking ahead when moving. Sometimes, a service user will find it difficult to get up from a lying position, especially first thing in the morning. You will need to offer assistance, but they should do the hard work for you. First, explain clearly to the service user what you want them to do. Ask them to bend their knees towards the edge of the bed and roll onto their side. They should then reach their arm out in front of them on the mattress. Position yourself at the edge of the bed 
with your feet hip distance apart. Maintain your spine's natural curves and keep your knees softened. Support the service user's shoulders and encourage them to let their legs drop over the edge of the bed. The service user should then push up on their arm. If a service user is unable to use their legs, you will need the help of a colleague. Occasionally, a service user will need some assistance to stand from a seated position. Remember though that they should do most of the hard work for you. Before asking them to stand, it's important to ensure they can do it. Check their physical ability and their understanding of your instructions. Talk the service user through the sequence so they are clear about what they have to do. Ask their permission to go ahead and then request that they shuffle forward so that their bottom is at the front of the chair. Next, the service user should lean forward so that their nose is over their knees and their knees are over their toes. Stand side on to the service user making sure your feet are in a stable position. Put one hand on their lower back and bend your knees. Ask the service user to put a hand on the armrest and make a fist with the other. Then encourage them to rock backwards and forwards and wait for your command, ready, steady, stand. On the word stand, apply slight pressure to their lower back and hold out your other hand so that the service user can put their fist into it. Do not push them. Once the service user is standing, encourage them to take a minute to check their balance. Hand them any necessary walking aids. Do not use walking aids as an aid to standing as they are unstable. Once the service user is in the standing position, encourage them to move their feet around so that they are plumb centre with the next seated position. Ensure they can feel where they are meant to sit with the back of their legs. Encourage the service user to hold the armrests if a chair or commode and lower themselves gently. They should not fall into the new position. Home carers come across a wide variety of moving and handling equipment. Under law, your employer is obliged to give you training in the safe use of such equipment and to explain its limitations. It is then your responsibility to use the equipment correctly and according to each service user's care plan. Typical examples of moving and handling equipment include stand and turns, transfer boards, sliding sheets and hoists. Stand and turn equipment is a very helpful means of supporting service users who can stand but cannot take any steps. They are used to transfer service users from various seated positions. Transfer boards are useful for moving service users who can control their body above the waist. Service users can use slide boards without your help if the care plan specifically says so and your own informal assessment confirms this is safe. Sliding sheets are an extremely useful and versatile means of moving service users without having to lift them. For instance, you can use them to turn a service user while they are in bed. You can also use a sliding sheet in combination with a transfer board or a transfer board with an integral slide sheet to move a service user who is seated from one place to another. Before using a sliding sheet, check that it is clean, the correct size and that all the stitching and seams are intact. If there are handles, check that these are in good repair too. Labels and handles should always go on the outside of the slide sheet. Put the sliding sheet and the second surface together and check that they will slide when the service user is on them. Hoists are used to lift the service user. They comprise a chassis, spreader bar, boom, wheels, mast and sling. You can use a hoist to move a service user into and out of the bath, from bed to chair, chair to toilet and back again, from their bed to a safe position while you change the linen or wash them. For a typical move, first explain and demonstrate what you are going to do. Ask the service user for their permission to perform the move. If they are lying down, roll them part way onto the sling for positioning. Spread the sling out fully and roll them the other way to complete the move. If they are sitting, fit the sling around them securely. Never lift someone onto a sling. Most slings have long loops with a series of attachment points. Check the care plan for details about which loops you should use to attach the service user to the hoist. 
It is important to realize each service user has different requirements and therefore may not be attached in the same way. Position the spreader bar above the upper part of the service user's chest. Keep it quite close to their body so that you can attach the strap safely to the sling. Do not lower the bar suddenly or move it in a way that will make the service user feel threatened. Make sure the hoist's brakes are off unless otherwise stated in the care plan or manufacturer's instructions. Lastly, check the sling is attached correctly and then lift the service user slightly using the hoist to make sure that they are comfortable. Some service users are reluctant to use the hoist because of a previous bad experience, a preference for human contact or a suspicion of technology, among other reasons. Reassure them by making sure they understand what is going to happen and maintaining visual contact with them throughout the move. You must carry out a formal check of a hoist every time you intend to use it. Examine whether the chassis is functioning fully, all the fastenings are tight, the emergency lowering button works, the handset operates correctly, there is sufficient charge, the sling is in good condition, and the weight of the patient doesn't exceed the safe working load limit of the hoist and sling. Note the results of your checks. If the hoist fails any aspect, do not use it and inform your manager immediately. Do not attempt to fix the hoist yourself. Hoists and slings must be formally maintained every six months. If a hoist has not been maintained within the requisite six months, you should not use it. Falls are often sudden and shocking for service users. Though it will be your natural instinct to try and stop or support them, do not attempt to as it could cause injury to both you and the service user. Most employers' policies regarding falls are straightforward. Usual practice is to cover the service user with a blanket once they are on the ground and call 999 for an ambulance. Reassure them and try to make them comfortable until help arrives. Do not attempt to move them or help them to get up as they may have sustained an injury. Always notify your manager of any fall as a reassessment of the care plan may be required. Manual lifting of people is not best practice as it does not allow the service user to use the strength they do have to help move themselves. It is almost impossible to lift someone without putting considerable stress on your back. However, there are some practices that are much less safe than others. The most common of these are the drag lift, the pivot lift and the shoulder lift. The drag lift has been recognized as unsafe for both carers and service users because it applies all the lifting force to the armpit and could cause the shoulder to dislocate. It can also contribute to the formation of pressure sores. The pivot lift is another dangerous maneuver. It puts pressure on the carer's back and relies on the service user's ability to stand. If for any reason the service user cannot stand, the carer takes their full weight. The shoulder lift is unsafe as you are lifting the service user and placing a great deal of strain on your back and arms. It can also damage the service user's shoulder joints. You must reflect on every manual handling task you perform and ensure that you do not slip into bad practice. Regular training will help you to stay up to date with research on different ways of helping service users to move and reinforce the principles of effective moving. Home caring is a rewarding job, but can present risks to the health of your back if you do not assess how you go about performing everyday tasks. To prevent causing permanent and painful damage to your spine and the ligaments and muscles attached to it, apply the following efficient movement principles. Familiarize yourself with your employer's health and safety policy and service users' care plans. Avoid moving where possible. Plan every move preparing the surrounding area. Use the correct technique when moving. Use moving equipment if available. Seek help when moving heavy or bulky objects. Inform your employer if you identify hazardous handling activities. Ensure your activities do not put others at risk. Keep fit and flexible. At all times, remember that you should provide service users with minimal physical assistance during moving tasks. 
they should do the heavy work for you. Also, only use specialist equipment if it has been specified in the care plan and carry out informal checks every time you intend to use it. Protecting your back is not a luxury, it's essential. Practicing the correct moving technique and being aware of the dangers that everyday activities can pose will help you to continue enjoying your work and ensure long-term well-being.